On this episode, I talk about mentorship, paying for jabs, and the single greatest decision of my life. You ask questions, and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary V Show. This is Gary Vay Nurchuk, and this is episode 46 of the Ask Gary V Show. Before we get into the uh, questions today, I just want to say, as you could probably see by the intro, I'm a little jazzed up. I could be a little tipsy, but not really, which is very little. Uh, really enjoying the show. Kind of missed it. When did I take the last episode? Last Wednesday? Thursday, or it still feels like way too long. I miss all of you. I appreciate the banter. Uh, we've got an update on the Amon guest question. I know we haven't done that, but before I forget, I will have a show Tuesday and Wednesday. Are we looking good? Wednesday. Wednesday, not tomorrow. I don't think so. Weird. Um, I'm gonna try to do tomorrow, but like, nothing. Got bumped out. Got bumped out. I'm pissed. Anyway, I have two more shows. Wednesday, I'll officially do it, but I'm scared I'll forget. And it's Wednesday. And that's a tough day because I'm getting going to my parents. I want to wish all of you a happy and very healthy uh, Thanksgiving. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's it, man. Let's go. Iwana asks, how many punches in the face and failures can an ordinary person handle before achieving success? I wanted the right, the right word in that question is ordinary person, right? Was it an ordinary person? Yeah, and I think that's the interesting part of your question, which is this whole notion that pisses me off that I don't believe that the far majority of people right now who claim that they are entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs. You know, I don't get to claim that I'm an NFL quarterback and then I just am one, and that's what's happening, right? A lot of people that don't have the skills, you put that word ordinary in for a very specific reason and it's the reason I want to rant on this which is the ordinary person, AKA the person that's not meant to run a business can probably only handle one punch, right? I mean like that's just what it comes down to. You know what my answer is? Unlimited. You can punch me in the face 8,000 times. I'm here to get punched, right? Like, you know, I really do think of it like a UFC or a boxer. Like, have you ever watched a UFC or boxing match and literally watched and thought to yourself, holy crap, if I took one of those punches, I'd be in a coma for the rest of my life. They're meant to be in the octagon. I am not. On the flip side, you show me a world where all 420 of these wonderful, amazing people quit VaynerMedia and I know exactly what to do the next day. That's how I roll. Those are the punches I can handle. Top 10 clients quit, cool. Can't ship to a state at Wine Library anymore, cool. Like I can handle unlimited punches because I'm purebred 100% entrepreneur. And so from me to the person that is a wannabe preneur who first punch in is like, eh, I'm gonna go get a job. From there, everybody fits somewhere in between that and that's your answer. N asks, any tips on how to get a mentor? And this is an interesting question for me because I've never, like even when I had a mentor and my amazing dad, I like pushed against it because I always, my, my mom and dad like made jokes like that I want to be claimed that like I'm a cabbage patch kid and I came from nowhere. My dad always likes to razz me when he thinks he deserves more credit because I never wanted to have that. Like I, I it's unbelievable, it's actually probably one of my biggest weaknesses is my lack of mentorship or learning from other, like I don't know, I like being self-contained. So I'm not the best person to ask this question. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sucky to ask this question. But I have answered it in the past and I think we've touched on this theme um, on the show before, which is, I think you just gotta go and get it, right? Like, and there's some people doing it right now. There's that one dude that wants to get you fired, Steve. I like that dude's bravado. He's like, how do I get Steve's job? And like, he emailed me. You, you see who I'm talking about the last couple of days? Oh yeah. Yeah, what's his name? Did you see my tweet storm? I yeah. Got <laughs> you got, so like, you know, that's interesting to me because he keeps pounding me and eventually I'm gonna know his name because he's like, I wanna be mentored. Now the truth is, I'm not looking for that right now. I don't feel like I can deliver. I can only deliver on, uh, mentorship through osmosis, right? We as a collective had a meeting earlier today and I think the youngsters all picked up a little something that they'll use and they'll like, learn of like how to scale and da da da. But I don't like, like I don't want like a, hey, come here Johnny, I'm gonna met I don't want that. There's people that do. And I think the best way to get one is just keep asking the five to seven people that you think can deliver on that for you. Whether it's email, like basically get to the point of a restraining order without going over that line. 
And I, I know, sorry Steve, but like I really believe that. Steve just did this. Like I, I really, I really believe that. You know, if you're listening on the podcast, like, you know, Steve just put palm to head. Like, but I believe that. I think you have to go and get yours, but you can't freak a girl out. You know, you can't be like a stalker. Like you just gotta, you, you gotta go and ask that person and you ask them. And the other way to do it is to provide that person value first. The amount of people that hit me up for mentorship, where they hit me up, DRock right behind the camera right now. Hey, I want to make a long, por- a long form piece of content for you on me. You know, cloud and dirt, link it up. You know, what that led to is what we have now. I mean, no, I'm baffled by people's lack of pangs. You want something so amazing from somebody which is their time and their energy and your opening question to that person is, hey, can you give it to me? That is insanity. How do you provide value? Alex, I mean, this whole room is filled with it. Alex takes a step in a different direction in his entrepreneurial career, willing to come in as a community manager. Show his face. Show this man's face when this happens. Willing to come in entry level job with the hope that, hey, I hope that I get noticed and then I can get into that inner circle that Gary has. And when I, when he was noticed and brought in, he he said, I don't want to make you, you know, I don't want to put you out here, but like, man, I can't believe this happened so much sooner which happened, what, four or five months in? Three months in. He, when he says so much sooner, he was in the, I don't want to speak for you, 18 months, 25, like when were you going to give up by not getting noticed? There's no giving up, but at least a year's time was my focus. <laughs> so he would have gave up after a year. <laughs> but that's the key, right? Like he came in and he wanted to pay forward and his version of paying forward and being my ecosystem was come into Vayner, start at the bottom, work it to the top. You know, and so, uh, you know, you want a mentor, why don't you provide that mentor with so much upfront value that you guilt her or him into mentoring you. Hey Gary, Sean Bruce here. We've had a my couple boy. opportunities to talk before. I do the sales and marketing for the Langston Hummus Company. My question today is, what was the biggest decision you made in your life that made you as successful as you are today? I've watched a lot of your keynotes, I've watched a lot of your different rants and waves and everything and interviews, but I want to know what is your honest opinion of the biggest thing that you did that made you as successful as you are today. Thanks Gary and I look forward to your answer. Thanks brother. Um, man, I'm so pissed that technology wasn't around. I, I, that would've, like, I, I would've been able to, if this was around when I was around, we would've been able to play me as a 14 year old asking some entrepreneur that question on YouTube. So pissed. Anyway, um, you know, I'm glad you asked this question because I now can really like, I was going there in my mind. I know what the answer is. It's a weird answer actually. I think the biggest decision I ever made was in fourth grade when I got an F on a science um, test in Mr. Molnar's class and I decided literally after, you know, first I hid the, I had to get it signed by my mom. I don't know if they still do that and you get bad grades, like this was some 80s stuff but I, yeah they do India. Um, I had to get it signed and I was not interested in being punished so I didn't bring it to her and then I put it in my, <laughs> under my bed and then it sat there for two days but then my, I was still young, my conscious still had too much power and like I got scared and told my mom about it. L- by the way, three years later I was flushing every report card directly down the toilet. You can evolve quickly. Um, when you make the mental decision that I made, no joke, I literally remember sitting in my room and having a weird, weird kind of like crying, debating like moment in fourth grade in my small bedroom deciding, screw school, I'm a businessman, and I'm gonna eat the pain of being punished every four times a year during the school year, being viewed upon as a loser or a kid that doesn't have a shot by all of society because I see something different, I have enough self-awareness of who I am, I'm gonna win, and literally, I mean, this is weird, I'm a fourth grader, you know, how old are you in fourth grade? My daughter's five, I'm nine, 10, 11, 10, you know, and I'm literally deciding that I'm willing to eat it for the next eight years, maybe even 12 years of my life where that was just a hardcore decision. And it's not that I didn't care, like I went to every class, I just decided to hone in on my skills. That I would learn more about selling baseball cards, that later at 14 became, I would learn more about selling wine, I honed in. And so it was the first time, my man, that I made a decision that I was gonna fight society's optics and deliver on what I thought I was, and that's what I did. Rollinson asks, is paid promotion for jabs an effective way to build an audience for right hooks? Rollinson, this is a great question. It's something I've been debating a whole lot. Now, just frame it up to everybody. The notion is, should he, you, 
she, him, it, it, where am I going? I don't know, but sorry, stick with me here because I'm excited. Should we as a collective pay for jabs, meaning a non-call to action, not buy this wine, but should I create an infographic about the Tempranillo grape and it's just a did you know about Tempranillo and it's just a piece of good content, should I spend three, four, five hundred dollars on getting this awareness to build up equity to then later come in with the right hook? I think the answer is predicated on how much money you have, right? If you have a limited budget, you're probably gonna wanna sell it for, save it for, hey, buy this wine for $14.99, it's a killer for Thanksgiving. You know, like, that is probably what you wanna save it for. Um, but if you have an overall marketing budget, if you're a bigger brand, if you're spending real money, I think there's enormous value in jabbing. I'm spending a ton of money on jabbing to build up awareness, to get people into the ecosystem. So I'm a big fan of spending dollars on jabbing. Content that benefits the audience, that doesn't have a direct ROI to you, and you're spending even more money on not just producing it, but getting it reach and awareness. Because I think of a, myself as a marketer and a brand guy, not just a core salesman. That has to do with your finances. I can do that today, I couldn't do it three years ago. I couldn't afford it. 10 years ago, forget it. So it depends on where your business is at, but if you can afford it, I would allocate some level, 10 to 30% of your budget on just jabs if you're limited. If you're a bigger brand, big pockets, 50-50 even, maybe 80-20 on just the branding because you're building exposure. I mean look, every TV commercial, every billboard, 95% of those aren't uh, infomercial. They're brand building, that stuff works. James asks, do you schedule time to be on social media or just jump on randomly during the day as you have time? James, I don't schedule crap other than I completely live on my schedule, meaning my, my admin, Matt, he schedules my whole life, but if I was to be in control, I would not schedule anything. It is, I, there's never been, you guys all have access to me, there is no 15 minutes get on social. Social's in me, it's not a tactic, it's my religion. So I do it every moment I can. It's always top of mind to be with my audience. I'm reading your comments, I'm reading your guesses on the almonds. On that note, let's segue, let's give this up. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are one more time and tell them what happened. I'm Stefan and I had to count almonds. <laughs> <laughs> and Hold on, let me come over here before you give the punchline. First of all, you guys were way closer. I, not being hardcore quant, realizing you guys were gonna be able to figure out the math. You guys, as a collective, scared the piss out of me because <laughs> the guesses were coming in so in the general range. The good news is nobody won. Good news for me and my wallet. The bad news is for my heart and my excitement, Nobody won because I would have loved somebody here, but because I love winning and losing, you're about to hear a story. This person is not being compensated, not halfway flown here. I'm not going to hit the, no, nobody won. You guys lost. Go ahead, Spun. Someone did come close though. Boost Lax came in with 423 and the count was 424. So you're off by one almond. 1424. 1424, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you missed it by one, man. One almond. Damn. One Almond. Episode 46 in the bag. Uh, one almond, that's devastating. A trip, could have sat here, would have been boys, could have changed the course of your life. One almond. <laughs> Guys, it hurts. But that's winning and losing. That's the way it is. Question of the day. What wine are you pairing with your Thanksgiving dinner? You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Oh crap, wait, subscribe! I need subscriptions because I can't push this many right hooks in social, so subscribe!